Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 14th of February, 2016. My name is Don Bold. I'm the pastor at the church, and for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to take the privilege of sharing with you the highlights from the message from this past Sunday. Uh, we're concluding a section of uh, sermons uh, that are addressing uh, sanctification. Not only positionally, you know, that God has called us and, and, and said that we are sanctified, uh, but also the practical outworking of that declaration over us, uh, that, that we walk it out experientially. And uh, so uh, we need uh, to enter into the experience of sanctification by employing the means that God has provided for us. And there are many. Uh, the three that we have addressed in this series have been uh, the use of God-given faith, uh, the revealed word of God, uh, and also yielding to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and just understand, these are the means. All right, there, There's other ones, but I mean, these are th three very, very powerful means of, uh, of entering into the practical, of being set apart for God's purpose. That's what sanctification is, being set apart, being washed, being prepared uh, to be used by God for the things that he's uh, desiring to do through us. Okay, So uh, I'd like to begin by speaking uh, just for God to your heart uh, from a scripture uh, that's found over in 1 Peter uh, chapter 3 verses 8 through 17. And it just says this, he's just given a long list of you know, the corruptions and immoralities and that sort of thing that, uh, that the people had been participating in before. And he says, to sum up, all of you, be harmonious, be sympathetic, be brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing. Instead, I was uh, on the plane and something awkward happened. I thought, boy, you know, that person, uh, you know, could be mad. And I thought they, they, they could hurl an insult in my direction. And I was thinking, what can I say to bless them in return that would be appropriate? And uh, so, you know, just be in this way. That's what sanctification is about. All right. So uh, verse 10, let's keep going. The one who desires life uh, and to love and to see good days. All right. So this, uh, what it's talking about is not just uh, our eternal blessing, but also talking about God desiring to do something in our lives today. They must keep their tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord, here we are, the eyes of the Lord again, are toward the righteous and his ears attend to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is there uh, to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? That's a real question. He's about to answer it. But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, all right, so we can suffer for doing what's right. You are blessed. Don't fear their intimidation. Do not be troubled, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. All right, so sanctify him so that he can sanctify us. Always being made ready to give a defense to, as to everyone who asks you uh, to give an account for the hope that is in you. Yet with gentleness and reverence and keep a good conscience so that in the things uh, which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better if God should will it that you suffer for doing what is right than suffer for doing what is wrong. All right, so, you know, we find ourselves sometimes in situations where we're going to suffer. There's just no way out of this. And then the question becomes, you know, if I'm going to suffer for doing what God wants me to do or suffer for turning away from it and doing my own thing, you know, what should I choose? Well, I'm going to choose to suffer for doing the thing that's right, that's right in God's sight. Okay, that's the better thing. All right, so, uh, you know, moving on here. You know, so uh, sanctification, what's this all about? Uh, you know, it's about that the most important thing for me in life, the, the, the biggest distinctive, if you will, that sets me apart and uh, makes me understand, you know, what life's about and who I am is that I belong to him. You know, and, and over in second, or First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many uh, wise, and it goes on to say, or, or mighty, or uh, noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things, all these things God has chosen. He's chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. He has uh, chosen the, the base things of the world and the despised. God has chosen uh, the things that are not to, so he can nullify the things that are so that, here's the so that again, so that no man may boast before God. 
by his doing, by his doing, that's, that's why we're, we're in Christ, by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. That's the most important thing, you know, is that I can boast that I'm his, and that I'm living a life that shows that I am, all right, because I have this wisdom, I have this sanctification, I have this redemption. And uh, so uh, we ought to live to please God. And uh, this is one of those plain language uh, moments in Scripture where uh, it just comes right out and says some things. And I think it's important for us to grasp this with regard to walking out sanctification. Finally then, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you received from us instructions as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do. He says, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't. I'm not insulting you. I'm just telling you, excel more. He says that you excel still more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. We still have commands that we're trying to walk through, the, the commands that Christ gave to us. And um, for this is the will of God. All right? You wonder what the will of God is. This is the will of God, your sanctification. That is that you abstain from sexual immorality, plain speech that each of you know how to possess uh, his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion as the Gentiles who do not know God. You have to understand, if you were a Gentile at this time, you worshipped idols, and you did not connect the idea of being moral uh, with uh, the idea of doing what was right in the sight of that God. Oftentimes the gods that they were worshipping were every bit as immoral as they were uh, prone towards being. But the word here is if you're going to serve the one true God, that God's moral. And, uh, you know, you need to abstain uh, from these things. All right, very plain. You want the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life, you're going to have to put away some things to make room for it. Uh, okay, and he goes on to say that God has not called us for the purpose of uh, impurity. All right? He's, but in sanctification. So he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. I remember all the way back to Samuel in the Old Testament when the people asked for a king, and he complained to God and said, they're rejecting me. And God said, they aren't rejecting you, they're rejecting me from being king over them. And to understand that there is this connection between yielding and obeying uh, God and uh, the working then of the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, and, and he refers to what he just told them as solemn okay, and a warning. All right, so, uh, you know, the, to this idea of, of this connection between the, the Holy Spirit and obedience over in Acts 5.32 and this, you know, conversation between the disciples and, uh, and the Sanhedrin, uh, you know, he tells them that the Holy Spirit was given uh, by God to those who obey him, all right? And, you know, if, if you're struggling in this area and you're saying, you know, man, I'm just in a fight, I want to give you a scripture to stand on, okay? Something to be able to declare this as truth over yourself because you have authority in Jesus to do so. It's found over in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. Uh, but you did not learn Christ in this way. He'd just given a long list of corruption and immorality that the people had been indulging in. If indeed you have heard uh, him and been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in uh, reference to your former manner of life, you can call it your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And to, to recognize we have authority in Jesus' name to do this, stand on it. Just take a stand, fight back, and, uh, and, and, and get what's yours, you know, the thing that is the will of God, that you walk in sanctification. And just to, to finish out what we're talking about today, I, I just want to talk about that sanctification also invites us into walking, uh, living out our life in a way that recognizes that it's not all about just now, that we are living for that which is eternal, that which will go on forever. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 through 17 says this, Pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God. Amen. That's instruction given to us. All right, we are stewards, distributors of the grace of God, according to 1 Timothy 4.10. Okay, so see to it that no one comes short of the grace of God. Minister the grace to one another, especially when you see it's needed. That no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. That there be no immoral or godless person like Esau who sold his birthright for a single meal. 
For you know that even afterwards, when he desired to inherit a blessing, he was rejected. All right, and and so, you know, to understand the importance, you know, Esau made the mistake. He gave away something that was a generational blessing that would have continued in his family for generations and perhaps even into eternity, for a bowl of soup. You know, and there's just times you have to look at those things that are attempting to draw you away from that sanctification as that bowl of soup. All right, and I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.